Today we're going to be answering the question, what is options trading and what are some of the benefits and dangers that go along with it? To my subscribers, nice to see you again and to all you new viewers, welcome and if you like this video, consider subscribing to join our investing community. To put it simply, options contracts are purchasable assets that give you the right but not the obligation to buy or sell 100 shares of an underlying asset at a set price on or before a specified date. Common uses for options trading include income generation, leverage, and to try to reduce risk. It is important to note that just like any other form of investing, risk can be taken on when using options, as unlike stocks, you can lose your entire investment, which I'll explain later in further detail. Make sure to know the risks before you begin, as options trading is not for everyone. There are two types of options you can purchase, call options and put options. Purchasing a call option allows you to benefit from an increase in the underlying asset's share price, and a put option allows you to benefit from a decrease in the underlying asset's value. In this video, we will go over call options. By definition, call options are financial contracts that give the option buyer the right but not the obligation to buy a stock, bond, commodity, or other asset or instrument at a specified price with a specific time period or expiration defined by the contract. This usually represents the right to buy 100 shares for each contract. To explain in simpler terms, let's use an example using AT&T stock which is currently trading at $29 at the time of recording, January 18th, 2021. Let's say this investor named Bob owns 100 shares of AT&T stock. Bob thinks that AT&T won't rise above $31 by the time of January 29th and wants to generate more income. Another investor named Dave, however, thinks that AT&T will go above $31 by January 29th, but he doesn't want to invest enough money to buy 100 shares outright, yet he still wants to profit from the movement of AT&T. So what do they do? They both get involved in options trading. In this case, Bob sells a call option contract that represents 100 shares that will expire January 29th with a strike price of $31. Dave agrees to buy this contract from Bob for 15 cents a share times 100 shares since one contract represents 100 shares for a total cost of $15. Now how do either of them profit? Well, first to understand this, let's go over what the strike price and expiration means. The strike price is the set price at which you can buy the underlying stock if you want to use the option. An example of this would be if Dave wanted to buy, he would buy 100 shares at $31 if AT&T is trading above $31 for a total of $3,100 because $31 is the strike price. The expiration is the date that the contract must be used by at the end of the trading day, and if it isn't, this option expires and can no longer be used. Let's go over a few scenarios of what could happen and who would benefit, and I'll explain more along the way. The first scenario is if the price of AT&T was to stay below $31 from today until January 29th the expiration. Dave would own a contract that allows him to buy 100 shares of AT&T at $31, which he would never want to use since he would be paying more for the stock than it is currently worth, since he can buy it for $31 but it's trading below it. In this case, the contract would be considered to be expiring worthless, and Dave would lose his initial investment of $15. Bob, on the other hand, who was paid $15 from Dave, is very happy as he made his money and has no other consequences for it. Now let's look at a different scenario in which AT&T were to rise to $32 by January 29th. Let's remember, Dave has the option to buy 100 shares at the price of $31 each at or before January 29th if the price is above $31. Now that the price is $32, this is beneficial to Dave as he can buy 100 shares of AT&T for $3,100 but then he could immediately sell them for $3,200. So in this instance, his profit would be $3,200 he could sell the stock for, minus $3,100 he could pay for the stock, minus the $15 he paid for the contract. So in this instance, he was able to gain an $85 profit. What if Dave doesn't have $3,100 lying around to buy the 100 shares? If this is the case, he also has the option to sell the contract to another person for at minimum the benefit they would get by exercising the contract. So in this case, he could sell it for at least $100 to an individual as the value of the buyer would get from exercising this contract is $100. In popular stocks, there would likely be someone willing to buy this from him, but please note there isn't a 100% guarantee to be a buyer. This value when exercised of $100 is called the intrinsic value of the option, as it is quantifiable benefit the owner has. There is also extrinsic value of an option, which is more complicated, which we can go over in another video. For today, we just have to stick with intrinsic value and holding the expiration to keep it simple, as there is almost zero extrinsic value on the day of expiration. But please note, you can also sell your contract before expiration. Now you may be wondering, what about Bob, the seller of the contract? Bob got his $15 from Dave that he was paid for the contract, and he also owned the 100 shares that rose from $29 to $32. 
Now, since Bob sold the contract to Dave at $31 strike price, he has to sell his shares at $31 to Dave. So Bob's total profit is $15 from selling the call, plus $2 per share profit from selling the stock at $31 for a total of $215 profit. It's important to note that it's not $3 per share profit because he can't sell it for $32, he must sell it for $31. Here's the third possible scenario that can occur. If AT&T were to rise to $31.15 by expiration, Dave, the buyer of the contract, would be able to buy 100 shares of AT&T just like before at a total cost of $3,100. And then he'd be able to sell them for $3,115 since AT&T is trading at $3,115 times 100 equals 3,115. If you remember from the last example, Dave's total profit can be calculated by showing the 3,115 he was able to sell the stock for minus the 3,100 he bought the stock for minus the $15 he paid for the contract. So in this instance, Dave's net profit and loss is $0. This is known as the break-even price or the price at which the buyer would neither gain nor lose money at expiration. This is an important number for any options buyer to know as this is the price the stock must reach by expiration to not take a loss. This can easily be calculated by adding your contract cost per share of 15 cents to the strike price of $31 for a total of $31.15 for the break-even price. The last scenario would be if AT&T was trading between $31, which is the strike price, and $31.15, which is the break-even price on the date of expiration. In this scenario, you would not lose your entire investment but you would lose a portion by the calculation of share price minus break-even price. So, for example, if the stock was $31.10, Dave would lose $0.05 cents per share or $5 overall, but would not lose his entire investment of $15. This is because he could still exercise and collect profit on selling the shares at a higher price than he pays for them, but his premium cost of $15 would be higher than his profit of $10, resulting in an overall net loss. With all possible scenarios at expiration explained, let's have a talk about the risks involved and the ways you may want to choose buying calls. I recommend you do not purchase calls unless you understand that you may lose 100% of your investment if the strike price you pick is not correct. I also recommend you do not buy calls unless you are experienced in normal stock investing. Unlike a normal stock, if the stock goes down below the strike price, you will lose everything if you hold till expiration, making this inherently more dangerous. You can sell early, however, and cut your losses. With this being said, if you are bullish on a stock and are correct, call options are a great way to make a profit, substantially higher than just owning the normal stock. For the stock you pick to buy calls on, I suggest you pick a stock that you completely understand, as owning options is more dangerous, so your chances of profit increase if you are more knowledgeable about the company you are investing in. As for the strike price you select, this depends on how bullish on the stock you are. Contracts with strike prices that are high above the current trading price are generally cheaper than contracts that are closer to the current trading price. So, your potential profits could be higher with a cheaper cost, but keep in mind that the higher strike price, the higher the chance you have of your contract expiring worthless because it's harder to reach the higher strike prices. So this chance at a higher profit comes at a great cost and a greater risk, so be sure you're confident. You can also buy options with the strike price being below the current trading price of the stock. This is considered to be an in-the-money call option. In-the-money call options are generally more expensive but carry less risk as they are less likely of expiring worthless due to their strike price being already below the current trading price of the stock. This is considered to be a more conservative strategy and better for those who are more risk adverse with a lower risk tolerance. Be aware however that if the stock drops below the strike price it can still expire worthless. To say it again, to reaffirm, the higher the strike price is above the current trading price, the more risk you are taking. In terms of picking an expiration date, this is entirely up to you, but generally, the further out the expiration is, the less likely your contract is of expiring worthless, given the same strike price at each expiration. Generally, expirations more than six months out are considered to be conservative or safer options. Overall, make sure you research the company and understand your risk tolerance before you begin doing call options. This channel moving forward will be going over stock analysis and all things investing, and I will have a weekly Wall Street Bets reaction video where I react to the craziest trades of the week. For more in-depth options trading videos, I recommend checking out the channel named In The Money. I will link him in the description. He's an excellent channel focused on purely how to do options trading, unlike my channel, which will be more focused on stock analysis you may want to buy shares in or options on, and reactions to crazy trades. So even if you don't like options trading, 
doing, my channel will be great because I'll be going over stock you might want to buy shares in. If you like investing and want to be updated on market news, consider subscribing. And if you found this helpful, a like is appreciated. Thank you guys for watching.